in the last video we were discussing the various events that led to the storming of the bastille do you remember what this bastille was this bastille was the state prison of france before the outbreak of the french revolution since this was considered a symbol of oppression by the people of france they stormed the state prison but what happened right after that is what happened after the revolutionaries took siege of this building and destroyed this prison in this lesson we will be discussing the events that took place after the storming of bastille that is we will be trying to understand the various events that together formed the french revolution we will be trying to trace what events took place in the years of the french revolution the storming of bastille in 1789 officially marked the outbreak of the french revolution because prior to this only revolutionaries were trying to counter the french monarchical rule but it is with the final storming of bastille that the french revolution took both a formal and a violent shape this one event triggered further protests and rebellion among the revolutionary masses now we have to understand what happened right after the storming of bastille in 1789 with the storming of bastille was destroyed this one symbol of oppression bastille was a prison you should be remembering where revolutionaries were sent they were tortured and punished in this state prison along with that any person who countered or opposed french monarchical rule was sent to this prison so the demolition of this prison meant a huge victory to the revolutionaries with this the revolutionaries took siege of the city of paris when they stormed the bastille they could get hold of huge amounts of gunpowder that was stored in this prison along with that they also gave freedom to the prisoners who were there in bastille after which this prison itself that is this huge building itself that towered over the city was demolished now with the demolition of bastille the king of france lost his control of paris because we have discussed in our previous lesson that even before the bastille was stormed by the revolutionaries they had already taken control of many important government offices and it is with the final fall of bastille that the king lost his control over the city of paris revolutionaries were now in charge of major government offices so the king lost his control he lost his power now these revolutionaries did something that would take care of the administration what did they do they formed a new revolutionary municipal body and what was this body called this body was called the paris commune this paris commune was now in charge of the administration of paris so following the fall of bastille it was the paris commune that was now in charge of the administration of the city of paris this was the office of the paris commune now the revolutionaries also wanted to do something that would bring the king under their control 
in one of our previous lessons that traced the background of the French Revolution, we talked about the king and his residence. At this time, that is when the storming of Bastille took place, the king was no longer living in Paris. Instead, he had then shifted to the palace of Versailles. The revolutionaries wanted to bring the king under their control. They wanted to keep the king in their strict vigil. For this, what did they do? They had the king come from Versailles to Paris and live under their constant observation. So now the king of Paris, that is King Louis XVI, was compelled to leave his palace of Versailles and he had to come to live in the city of Paris. His stay in the city of Paris was more of a house arrest. This is because when the king was living in his residence at Paris, all these revolutionaries and all the people of France could keep him under their strict control. So, with this, the king lost almost all his power over the city of Paris and other areas of France as well. But what happened after this? That is, after the revolutionaries set up this Paris commune and brought the king under their strict vigil. The state prison Bastille was stormed by people who belonged to the third estate. So mostly peasants and other people from the third estate marched up in revolution. It is they who broke out in rebellion against the French monarchical rule and it is they who stormed the Bastille prison. Now these people of the third state were in no way an organized army. They were very unorganized. There wasn't any proper organization within them. Which is why after the storming of Bastille and the formation of the Paris Commune, the rebellious militia of Paris had to organize themselves together. What did they do? They organized themselves into a citizen's force. And what was this force called? This force was called the National Guard. Now this National Guard that was formed by the rebellious militia, the revolutionaries, this one National Guard was beyond the control of the king. National Guard was independent of the king. It did not pay heed to what the king of France had to say. In fact, some soldiers who formerly belonged to the royal army also joined the National Guard because they sympathized with the cause of the revolutionaries. In this way, the rebellious militia organized themselves together into the citizens' force. Now, what was this National Guard meant to do? This National Guard was in charge of a lot of things. The first thing that the National Guard was intended to do was to restore law and order. Following the storming of Bastille, the French Revolution had assumed violent shapes in some cases. It reached to a great proportion. Which is why there was a lot of chaos, bloodshed and violence. So, the first task that this National Guard was supposed to perform was to restore law and order in not just the city of Paris but throughout France. Along with restoring law and order in the city of Paris and other areas of France, the National Guard was supposed to provide military support to the cause of the revolution. In our previous lesson on the background of the French Revolution, we learned that the King of France was bringing in troops from foreign countries 
so as to reassert his military strength. Now the revolutionaries understood that the king was trying to defend and protect his rule and in turn counter the revolutionaries. So this national guard was meant to protect and provide military support to the revolutionaries. In case the king attacked the revolutionaries, there would be the national guard who would protect the revolutionaries. These were the primary reasons why the national guard was formed. In fact, the formation of this national guard led the foundation for the formation of a revolutionary army. In this way, the revolutionaries were trying to organize themselves so that they can successfully overthrow the French monarch that was King Louis XVI. After the formation of the Paris Commune and the National Guard, the revolutionaries also had to take care of something that was very important. These revolutionaries required political guidance as well as a formal legislative body that would give a proper shape to the revolution. In fact, when the National Constituent Assembly was formed, it was tasked to form a constitution for France. So the revolutionaries had to take charge of this after the storming of Bastille and the formation of the Paris Commune. So in the August of 1789, the National Constituent Assembly of France adopted the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. Before forming a constitution, it was this declaration of the rights of man and of the citizen that the National Constituent Assembly of France adopted. Now, this was a historic document for France. It meant victory to the revolutionaries. Why is it so? Because this one document ensured certain civil liberties for all the citizens of France. All the citizens of France would now be treated equally and they would now get to enjoy certain civil liberties. It is for this reason that this document was a monumental success to the revolutionaries. Subsequently, this document also paved the way for the formation of the constitution of the Republic of France that came later. Now let us try to understand what this document stated. This document stated that all the citizens of France are now equal. Ideas of enlightenment thinkers like Rousseau, Voltaire, Montesquieu and John Locke had inspired this document. It meant that liberty, equality and fraternity will now be given to people. Along with political liberty, people would also get certain civil liberties that cannot be taken away from any citizen. So they would now get the right to life, to liberty and to property. All citizens would be equal before law. They would have the freedom of speech and expression and they would be protected from arrest without any reason. This was what the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen stated and this paved way for the French Constitution of 1791. So it was the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen that made way for the Constitution of France that was drafted in 1791 by the National Constituent Assembly. Now, what did this new constitution state? What did this new constitution have in store for the people of France? Let us now try to understand that. This constitution of 1791 established constitutional monarchy in France. Now, what does constitutional monarchy mean? 
this meant that while the people of France would have the ultimate power or the real power, the king of France would remain as the constitutional head of the state. This monarch would now get to enjoy limited power because ultimate power would lie in the hands of the people. So, sovereignty would reside in the assembly itself. That is, the people of France will have the real power or sovereignty. But this constitutional monarchy would keep the monarch of France as a constitutional head. Now, why did the National Constituent Assembly propose this idea of a constitutional monarchy? Because you should understand that the figure of the monarch has been a symbol of power in not just France but throughout Europe for centuries and centuries. If suddenly this one symbol of power is removed, the people of France will not understand where power resides. They will not be able to understand in whose hands power lies. So, while this constitutional monarchy divested the monarch of all power and gave him very limited power, he would still remain the constitutional monarch so that the people of France would understand that this person was still their constitutional head. It is for this reason that the National Constituent Assembly proposed the idea of a constitutional monarchy in the Constitution of France in the year 1791. Now, before proceeding with the lesson, let me ask you a question. What form of government did the Constitution of 1791 establish in France? Was it a republican government or an absolute monarchy or a constitutional monarchy or a dictatorship? Yes, you are right. The constitution of 1791 proposed a constitutional monarchy where the real power, the sovereignty will reside in the assembly or the people of France and the monarch will remain just a constitutional head. Now, soon after this, the National Assembly started losing its importance. It started losing its significance. In our previous lesson, we talked about how the National Assembly rose to prominence before the French Revolution broke out, that is, before the storming of Bastille took place. After the Constitution of France was set up by the National Constituent Assembly in 1791, this National Assembly started losing its power. It started fading out of importance. Why is it so? This is because the National Assembly was riddled by a conflict. Conflict among whom? Conflict among various political elements. Now, what were these various groups because of which the National Assembly started to decline? First upon our list are the radicals. The radicals were extreme left. What does that mean? This means that the radicals were anti-monarchy. They wanted to overthrow the monarchy and set up a republican government in its place. They also wanted to have all the power in the hands of the people themselves. So, there would be no monarchy, no monarch, no authoritarian rule. The radicals constituted one extreme end of the various warring, conflicting political elements. At the other end of the spectrum were the royalists. Now, these royalists were extreme right. What does this mean? This means that the royalists were in favor of monarchical rule. The nobles, the royalty formed the royalists and in no way did they want this French revolution to overthrow this monarchical rule. Now, these two groups were completely opposing in their ideas. In the middle of these two groups were 
the moderates. They were neither as extreme left as the radicals nor as extreme right as the royalists. They were in the middle. Now these various conflicting political groups led to the disintegration of the National Assembly. The National Assembly could not have just one voice, just one idea to take ahead the revolution. So, it is because of this reason that the National Assembly started losing its importance. Another major decision that the National Assembly made pushed it to insignificance. What was this decision? We talked about this a while back that it was the National Constituent Assembly that proposed the idea of a constitutional monarchy for the Republic of France. Now the king was heavily resented by the public. The people of France did not like King Louis XVI. Since the National Constituent Assembly set up a constitutional monarchy, which means that the king would be the head of this constitutional monarchy, people now started going against this idea of the National Assembly. It is for this decision that the National Assembly made that it started growing extremely unpopular. The people of France were no longer wanting the National Assembly to exist. They wanted the National Assembly to now be wiped away. Now, with the disintegration of the National Assembly, another assembly needed to be made to take care of the charges that were formerly under the National Assembly. So, in the year 1792, a new assembly called the National Convention was elected to power. So, in 1792, it was this National Convention that was elected to power. Now, what was the task of this National Convention? Previously, the National Constituent Assembly set up a constitutional monarchy. Opposed to that idea, this National Convention was tasked to remove all traces of monarchy and instead establish a republican government in France. So, it is with the formation of the National Convention in 1792 that came into being the first French Republic. This French Republic swept away all traces of monarchy. It was now independent of the French monarchy. Soon after the National Convention was elected to power, this National Convention or this Assembly now charged King Louis XVI with treason. King Louis XVI was becoming very, very unpopular to the masses prior to the outbreak of the French Revolution. And it is with the formation of the National Convention that King Louis XVI was now charged with treason. What happened to him? Despite huge efforts put up by the royal guards, they could not protect King Louis XVI. He was taken to the guillotine and he was beheaded in January 1793. This marked the formal end of French monarchy. King Louis XVI was beheaded in the January of 1793. Soon after, the National Convention also executed his wife, Mary Antoinette, in the October of the same year. Like King Louis XVI, Mary Antoinette was also very, very unpopular among the masses. So, in the same year, that is in 1793, in January, King Louis XVI was beheaded and in October Mary Antoinette was also executed and together this marked the end of French monarchy. Now what came 
after this national convention was now in power and ended the French monarchy. Initially, the people of France rejoiced when they saw this decapitated head of King Louis XVI. This was a momentous victory to them. Why does this one decapitated head signify victory to the people of France? Because this meant that the French monarchy has finally been put to sleep. It was now the people of power that would rule France. But very soon another political change came over the Republic of France. The Republican government that was formed was soon overrun by radical groups of people. These radical groups were led by one person by the name of Robespierre. Robespierre was an extremist who resorted to a very violent strategy to keep everything in his control. And thus ensued the reign of terror. What did Robespierre and these radical groups do? They tried to use terror in order to maintain order within the Republic of France. Simultaneously with terrifying, with threatening the people of France, they began the massacre of all the alleged enemies of the revolution. Now these enemies of the revolution included former government officials and all people who tried to counter, who tried to question Robespierre and his extremist ideas. It is during this reign of terror that France witnessed the killing, the massacre of more than 300,000 people. Imagine how many people were killed during this period. It is for this reason that this period was called the reign of terror. This reign of terror was a period of huge political turmoil. No one was at rest. The first French Republic that was now in existence was in no way happy and prosperous. It wasn't a stable and calm period. People were reeling under the fear of these radical groups. It was during this reign of terror that France was besieged by terror, by political upheaval and turmoil throughout the Republic. You should know that the Republican government failed to do anything to stop this reign of terror. It wasn't able to maintain law and order and peace within the Republic of France. But the reign of terror came to an end when the people of France finally gathered together to put an end to this reign of terror. Because the Republican government could not do anything. The people of France realized that they had to take this matter in their own hands for their own survival. So it was the public of France that replaced the national convention. And how was this national convention replaced? As in what put an end to this reign of terror? Because the man Robespierre who performed this mass execution during the reign of terror was himself guillotined. So Robespierre was executed and this marked an end to the reign of terror. Now what happened after the reign of terror came to an end and the national convention was dismissed? In its place came into being this new assembly called the directory. And it was this directory that stabilized the Republic of France. So the Republic of France that was going through a very turbulent phase during the reign of terror was finally brought to a condition of stability by the directory. So it was the directory that now brought peace and stability to the Republic of France. With the end of the French Revolution came to an end the estate system. 
the concepts of privileges and feudalism on which was established the estate system were now abolished. Public offices were made open to all. Liberty, equality and fraternity, these ideas now spread to different parts of Europe. And not just Europe, these ideas spread all across the globe to inspire subsequent revolutions for independence. The Republican government failed to restore political calm in the country of France. This is because upheavals, turmoils had spread out in different parts of the country. The Republican government realized that it cannot do anything. In fact, revolutionary ideas were also spreading across Europe. The rulers of Britain, Prussia, Austria realized that if these revolutionary ideas come to their country, they might also suffer what happened to the monarch of France. So, they joined hands together and they decided to wage a war against this revolutionary France. Now, there took place a battle between these countries and France. France incurred huge losses after this battle. And eventually, this caused a drying up of the French treasury. Even after this, the Republican government couldn't do anything. At this juncture, the Republican government of France failed to live up to the promises it made initially. Because the people of France realized that this Republican government was too keen on making itself a perfect Republican government while the leaders of the government had no intention of doing so. So, in the process of making a perfect Republican government, France was going through a series of changes, as in changes in new assemblies, the disintegration of one assembly to pave the way for another assembly, constant sorts of changes were taking place throughout France during and after the French Revolution. This led to a huge instability within the country. The masses realized that they needed a strong leader who will be able to restore peace and stability to their country. For this reason, they realized that the Republican government wasn't enough or the Republican government wasn't competent enough to restore peace and stability to their country. So, this newly formed Republic of France was now in dire need of a strong leader who would not just bring peace and stability to the Republic, but who would himself be an embodiment of the revolution, that is embodiment of the French Revolution. Now, who do you think this leader was? It is this leader whose rise to power, whose rule and whose subsequent decline that we will be taking up in our subsequent lessons. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.